Welcome to The Road Reflected with Nicole Wakelin. Automotive from the lighter side. That means cars, but also cookies, coffee, and pie. Up first, what's Nicole behind the wheel of this week? Hey, everybody. This week, I am driving a Mazda. The all-new Mazda CX-90, which isn't just new this year, it's new-new. It hasn't existed before 2023. Is Mazda the Zoom Zoom people? They're not Zoom Zoom anymore. Zoom Zoom was the old marketing campaign. Oh. They are not Zoom Zoom. What are they now? <laughs> I just forgot. I think it's <laughs> Driving Matters. Oh, okay. I think it's Driving Matters. Oh, God, am I quoting the wrong company? Well, I think, clearly the old campaign I was more memorable. Just matters. throwing that out there. That's I'm terrible. not an expert. Well, I think that might answer it right there. Yeah, <laughs> if, if you can't if you can't remember the new logo, the new slogan, I guess it's not a slogan. It's a right. slogan. Yeah, Driving Matters. That's okay. Mazda. I nice. suddenly had a panic yeah. attack. I'm like, wait, is that a different OEM? I'm just giving away their, their <laughs> slogan. Whatever. All right. <laughs> so- Mazda CX-90, mm-hmm. which is, it's going to replace the old CX-9, which is also a three-row SUV, but this one is the new fancier one. And it comes with two different powertrains. There's a turbocharged inline six-cylinder, or there's a plug-in hybrid. Monroney Moment. Okay, guys, so this is the Monroney moment. You don't know what a Monroney is. I'm going to give you a quick lesson. Oklahoma Senator Mike Monroney sponsored a bill that created the window sticker back in 1958. And guess what? They called it a Monroney. So now we have the Monroney moment. And we're going to run down some of the key things that are in your Monroney that tell you about the car that you're about to buy. In this case, the Mazda CX-90 plug-in hybrid. It has a 2.5 liter four cylinder engine, 323 horsepower, 369 pound feet of torque, eight speed automatic transmission. It can tow up to 3,500 pounds when properly equipped, and it starts at $59,950. Ooh, that's much easier to understand than actually reading a Monroney. Because the Monroney has everything. It's like, it has, a, it's like one page, but it's a big page. It's a big page. So these, But these are the things that you always pull out of it, like the specs and stuff that us professionals automotive journalists look at that's the part that we look at that's right but as a as a passenger you look inside and you're like how many people fit in this thing yeah okay so you've got lots of choices six Mm -hmm. seven Mm -hmm. or eight Oh, it all depends how like, you can they come it. in different sizes or you just one size, just you're going to mess around with the second and third rows. Oh, right. So it's either, um, you can do two, 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 or you can do two, three, two, or you can do two, three, three. Mm. Did all that work? Yes, I think that I think worked. So. Is the math mathing? I think that all worked. So depending on which version of it you get, you can get different seating configurations. I love second row captain's chairs. I think they're the best. We've, we've determined that we like captain's chairs because of the egress passageway. Oh, yeah. The thing in the middle, right? I, I, let's call it the really formal sounding thing in the middle. Because okay. <laughs> you can get through. But is this, now, what was your feeling? I mean, obviously I saw it too, but what, what, what are your feelings on third row configuration like how much room is there yeah, in this yeah, one yeah. so the third row third row is always the worst place to mm-hmm. sit like it doesn't matter if you're talking about a small suv or a gigantic ford expedition max something huge it doesn't matter it's always a small spot so sometimes you can fit sometimes you can't i feel like in the cx90 you can kind of fit like you are six three you could fit back there your knees aren't going to be completely jammed up against the backs of those fancy captain's chairs but you're probably not going to want to sit back there for a road trip that spans like eight hours eh. Yeah. yeah. But if you're doing a s- shorter trip, like if you're just, you know, it's for a day trip even, or it's just for, you know, you're going to dinner, you're meeting friends, you all want to pile into the same car. It totally works. And the nice thing is that when you tip, not everyone lets you get into from the side. Like, you know, you can go through the spot in the middle, like climb around, but if you want to actually just step right in from the outside of the vehicle and push that second row forward, it tips and slides and moves forward enough that you can pretty much just step right in. So there's this no awkward, like your butt sticking out here are sideways. If you're wearing a skirt and you're a lady, you're in trouble. (laughs) Like you can actually get in and out of the third row of the CX-90 without being an acrobat. And what were your thoughts about cargo, whether or not the third seat was up and down? Do you feel like you could fit things in the back? I think there was a good amount of cargo. So always when you have the third row up, you're kind of getting a squinchy kind of smaller amount for cargo space. But in that case, you know, you're, if you're just carrying a small amount of stuff, you want to have three rows up, but you have, I don't know, maybe like light luggage that you want to bring with you or throwing groceries back there or some stuff, you're fine. If you really want to carry cargo, you got to fold down that third row. And once you fold down the third row, suddenly you've got tons of room. Like if you've got a family of four, I guess you could have, how many could you have? One, two, three, four, five. You could have five right. sitting there. <laughs> Math is so hard. <laughs> so you could have five sitting there. If you have five people sitting there, you could fit everybody's luggage. Or if you wanted to go, 
camping you could fit, everybody's camping stuff. Like pretty much once you fold that third row down, you have plenty of room for everybody's stuff. Got it. And and so you feel like the back's got plenty of room if you flip it down. Mm-hmm. And the, the captain's chairs make it awesome. Mm-hmm. So it definitely feels like a your cl- sort of classic minivan configuration, but aren't Mazda's kind of known for handling? SUVs are cooler than minivans. Sorry. Oh, that's right. It's an SUV. I forgot. It's an SUV. It's not yeah. a minivan. How dare you go, I, sir? I get confused. You got your, <laughs> as a layman, you got your SUVs, you got your minivans, and you got your- Slidey doors. Crossover vehicles. There's no sliding side doors. Is that the definition? That's the minivan. Okay. The minivan yeah. has the sliding side doors that I as I can never open right. No matter what I do, I manage to like open, close, close, open. I can't, so is it kind of like a them. martini- Mm-hmm. That if you look at the glass, if it's if the drinks in a certain glass, the martini glass, then it's a martini by definition, and if it's not in a martini glass, it's not. So if there's a sliding door, is it by definition a minivan? If there's no sliding door, is it not a minivan? I would say yes. Inter- okay, that helps me because sometimes these crossovers look kind of like minivans, and these minivans kind of look like crossovers. No. It's on the edge. Sliding doors, minivan. Okay, no sliding doors, crossover slash SUV. So if it's big with no sliding door, then SUV. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. How's it handle? Because it's a Mazda. It handles really well. So here's the thing. So SUVs aren't known for being the most dynamic vehicles to drive. They are, especially the bigger they get, the more unwieldy they get, the more you sort of feel that body roll when you're on the road. Yeah. Or if you take a really like a corner kind of fast, even like an exit ramp or an on ramp onto a highway, if you take it really fast and it's really winding, you get that sort of whoa, that that sense like you're not really gonna tip over, but that tip over kind of feeling. Um, you don't get that in this. That's the really neat thing about Mazda. Mazda makes cars for people who like to drive. Even though this is a three row SUV for a family, it still makes cars for people who like to drive. So it's fun to drive this. Is it like driving a little Miata? No, but you can't put a family of five True. in a Miata. You can't okay. put much in a Miata besides two people. You could hardly fit two humans in and a Miata. And a dog, no. No, Maybe no even dog. A bag. I don't yeah. think a teacup dog even. No, it's, it's, no, a, it's a very small car. It's, it's, it's super fun. Like the answer to everything is Miata. It's like the funnest, <laughs> it is bestest fun. little thing to drive around on a sunny day when you can let the top down. In fact, I have some journalist friends who can't test drive it without the top down because mm-hmm. their heads hit the top. It's that <laughs> tiny. It is small. Like tall guys are like, I don't I fit in a Miata very well. You do not no. It's it's not pretty. But you're like, oh, we got a Miata as I'm like doing yes. a little happy dance in the right, living room. Right, right. But so this isn't a Miata. It's not as fun to drive as a Miata. It's an SUV. But this is an SUV for people who want to bring the kids, bring the friends, bring all the stuff, but still want to be able to enjoy the car while they're driving it. And this has plenty of pep. I had the plug-in hybrid. It's like I said, it's 323 horsepower. It's a decent amount of horsepower, Mm -hmm. 319 pound feet of torque. That means that when you smash the gas down, it knows you want to go and it goes. Um, So I like that this is an SUV that still handles like a Mazda. It's Mm. a Mazda SUV, which makes it different than other SUVs. I like it. Also, I need to say that the one thing ours in the driveway doesn't have, it's white. Oh, that's super boring. I feel Mazda should be red. Yes. Mazdas, every Mazda. If you're buying a Mazda and you are not buying it with the soul red crystal paint, you're buying it wrong. Ooh, soul red crystal That's paint. what it's called. I looked it up. It's $595 <laughs> extra. It's worth every penny. Worth at least $595 extra because it's the best red paint. I know other guys will say like, oh, the red paints are all the same. We have the cool red paint. Everybody has red paint. I know everybody has red paint. Everybody doesn't have the same red paint. Nobody makes red paint like Mazda's Soul Red Crystal. Okay, so if you're liking what you're listening to, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the like button, either on YouTube or in your favorite podcaster of choice. Yes, your podcatcher. Podcatcher, sorry. Words yeah. are hard. Podcatcher of choice. Exactly. Well done. How's oh, that? That's very, very fancy. I'm and you a, can't see her, but she's she's got a gesture going on here I also. Do. That really puts the it's kind of like point. if you could see it, it's sort of like ah, yes, podcatcher. Exactly. All right. So I drove a bunch of stuff I can't talk about this week. Well, that's no fun. I know. I had the uh, you get G- super secret squirrel stuff and none of us get to hear about well, it. Well, I can tell you what the se- super secret squirrel stuff was. Okay. I was in the GMC Canyon. Ooh. I was in the Chevy tracks. Ooh. That's all I can tell you. Are these, can you tell us the type of vehicles there? Well, the GMC Canyon is a, is a midsize truck. Okay. And the Chevy tracks is a compact crossover that's super affordable and sits at the start of the Chevy lineup. So Ooh. they're, they're both all new this year. So can I keep you, asking you questions? Do you say something you shouldn't? No, I, oh. you can't. That's terrible. <laughs> You're going to get more. me in trouble. I think all of our listeners want to know more. They might, but I'm going to get me in trouble. I can give okay. no drive impressions. Drive impressions are all embargo, which means okay. they sort of set a date and a time. And that's when we, well, then all... how are the lines? How do they look? 
They look good. I mean, okay. anyone can see them. You can go online. You can see them. Okay, okay. They're out there. Um, you can see them. They look great. I think. So when do they good. come out of Embargo? They come out of Embargo within the next week-ish. Oh, so next episode. Next episode, I think All I can right. talk about both of them. Okay. But this episode, I can't. And then this week, I'm heading out to drive to more things that I might talk about in the next episode. Ooh. I'm heading out to drive... The Subaru cross trucked with the more robust engine. They have two engines, so I'm driving the more powerful engine now. So it'll be more fun to drive, I'm guessing. It's not a drive impression. I haven't driven it yet. And I'm also going to get to go to drive the Alfa Romeo Tonale in Italy, which is cool because I don't go I'm, on. I'm a little bit jealous of the Italy thing. Yeah, I'll have a cappuccino for you. Uh, Yes. I, don't, I mean, and it's not like I'm jetting off to Europe every week to drive cars, people. This no, is pretty cool for this me, This is too. rare. This is, I mean, I'm kind of excited. I'm also jealous for thing. you. Yeah, normally yeah. it's in the U.S. So this is really cool. I'm excited. It's, it'll be fun to go to Italy. It'll Definitely a cappuccino. Too. Yeah. Some form of pasta. Mm, Always good over there. I feel like that's required. Maybe yeah. some gelato. Is that also I, what I, you need to have? Sure. Yeah, why not? I might buy fancy Italian shoes while I'm in, because I'm in Milan. That's the fashion I think place. you have to get some fashion. I want that noted that my husband has approved that <laughs> well, purchase. I would just like to know the, but we got to establish mm, a budget you situation. You approved before <sighs> you establish budget. That may have been your mistake. That could have been trouble. So I want to, I don't know if I commented on this last week, but I feel like I need to pick on you a little bit about your traveling. Did I mention Which traveling? your travel uh, when we traveled out to Milwaukee last week and you had some challenges getting through TSA? I don't think we talked about this. I don't know if we have to. I think there's we a lot should. of car information we should okay. be sharing. We should be sharing a lot of car information, but every now and then I think it's fun to talk about some of the other stuff that comes uh, along with okay. it. So we were flying out there to visit a child, but we fly, fly a lot. I fly Our all adult the time. child who's in college. Yes. Now. And yes. I fly multiple times a week. Almost every week I fly somewhere. So yes. I have a system guys. I go through TSA and like, a place for everything and everything in its place. To be clear, we both have systems. We uh, both travel quite a bit. Do we? Well, <laughs> do we both have Sometimes systems? Sometimes you make a mistake. That's all I'm saying. Okay. So we go through TSA and he gets his backpack and his backpack gets like, shh, they have a little thing that like, poof, shoots it out. Like yours is going to get inspected. Yeah, more. it goes through the scanner, you know, the, right. the x ray machine and it doesn't make it to the end. It goes, boom. And you know your bag has been you detained. Know you've, something is, and, and it doesn't <laughs> necessarily mean you've done something horrible. It could just be there's something in there that's Something totally in your legit. bag is setting off the scanner. Right. Yeah. Coffee, just as a heads up, people, and candles. Every time they'll want to see what those yes. are. I don't know what they look like on the scanner, but they will always flag your bag. But you got flagged for something that you shouldn't have brought. And I was like, dude, this is well, such a rookie mistake. I can mistake. explain. I have an explanation for this. Yeah. What, so, what did you bring through? Okay. So they grabbed my backpack and they never grabbed my backpack because I'm really good about packing it properly and it doesn't have a problem. And I was like, man, what did I, I just, it's sometimes, you know, the, all the x-ray machines have different levels of x-ray. And so you never really know. None of these are the answer. And they pull my bag aside and the woman looks at the x-ray and she goes, ah, and she reaches into the side pockets, the side pouches in the bag. And she pulls out one of those little bottles of water uh-huh. that you get from the airlines. Water. On Delta. Like he it's a little Delta a bottle of water. bottled water through TSA. I did, but I didn't mean to. So first I of all- I know he didn't mean you to. You couldn't see it because it was the short bottle of water. So it was in the pocket fully. And the reason I have a bottle of water in my backpack is yes. normally when I- when I fly on the plane and they give you one of the little screw top bottles of water, I don't drink it on the plane. I put it in my backpack because when you get to the hotel, this is a traveler pro tip. A lot of hotels <laughs> don't put water in your room. And so you get there and you're thirsty and the local water in the sink isn't great for whatever reason. Having a little bottle from your air flight is very helpful. But you left But it. when I got to the hotel, they had put bottled water in my room. So I left it in my backpack without thinking. I came home. I get you know, and then here we are. Yeah, so that was the first misstep, yes, it was a mistake. and I didn't pretend I didn't know him, which shows you how much she I love almost him. did though. Because the she second was very one, offended. the second one. Okay, was, this one was worse. We got on the plane. <laughs> this is like ten minutes later. We get on the plane, and you know you have your long roller bags are shaped like a rectangle. Yes. And when you put them on the plane, the short end goes in, and sometimes they go flat, and sometimes they go on their side like a book. It depends on yes. the overhead. There's a little map in the back. Follow the map in the back. You would think, oh, he must have tipped it on its side. No, you know what he did? Do you know what he did? No, (laughs) he took the thing and he put it in lengthwise, taking up enough space for two bags. It was bad, but but to to, in my defense, in my no, there's no defense. It was one of the little puddle jumpers, and sometimes on one side of the puddle jumper, you can only go sideways. No defense. And so I misread which side I was on, and I put Mm -hmm. it in sideways instead of lengthwise. Uh And then what was even worse was the woman, a a, a more (laughs) seasoned child. Have you? Tried putting it straight in. I was like, oh, yes, it doesn't fit. And then the, <laughs> the airline attendant walked over and switched it. It fit. I was like, oh, what an idiot. So, yeah, yeah I was having a bad 
Or and something about I'd him. like to point out to everyone that even then I didn't pretend that I didn't know him. No, in but case. I was pretty embarrassed for myself. I was mortified situation. to be seen with you. Like, oh my god, it was he's making the classic. It was awkward. Like newbie traveler mistake. I did feel like I was hashtag Orlando bound. You, yeah, because Orlando flights are the worst flights. Because <laughs> we have a little joke hashtag Orlando bound that Nicole created. Because if you're a business traveler and you travel a lot, generally everything's pretty cool. Because most people on planes, if you're going anywhere on a weekday, generally business. But if you ever go into Orlando, there's no business it's, travelers. It's always full of families who very rarely travel. So you see the craziest stuff and kids who are confused and yes. moms and dads who are yes. confused and yes. people who don't understand the process at so all. If you're ever on a flight to Orlando, you just know it's going to be, crazy. it's like entertaining. It's just watching everyone kind of go crazy. Yes. And like, like we have proven even veteran travelers make pretty basic mistakes, but they aren't basic mistakes. Like people will full on try to shove like a giant stroller in the overhead and the flight attendant will catch it and be like, Oh no, 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 no. That needs to be left at the, <laughs> Gate. Right, I feel what like I need to doing? change the subject because I'm getting shamed for my travel skills. Okay. So I'm going to put this back into cars. I have a car question okay. for Okay, go ahead. It does confuse me quite a bit. Uh-oh. So I need to know the proper terminology for the different kinds of electric vehicles. So there are electric, there are regular hybrids. We talked about this last episode. Like yes. hybrids that have batteries and internal combustion engines. Yes. But there's no plugs. You can't plug them Correct. in anything. Then there are cars like my Jeep four by E Wrangler, which has a, it again is a hybrid. It has batteries and internal combustion, but it also has a plug plug in hybrid or, and then there are full electric vehicles. Yes. Right. Which are, they have no internal combustion engines and all they have is a plug. Correct. So, those so the first three, two have so gas you know tanks. Well, what are the, what are the abbreviations? Cause like there's a car and a driver that's like, P E H V. No. So, okay. <laughs> so hybrids. See, I, I knew hybrids are just called hybrids. And sometimes okay. you'll see them called HEVs for hybrid electric vehicles. Okay. But normally people just call them hybrids. Plug in hybrids. So there's no P, there's no plug. Then there's no, literally all you have is a gas tank. There's no plug. There's, you, right. You okay. just have a gas tank. You have a battery in there, but there's no way to charge it. It charges during the course of you driving and, and it. yeah, regenerative braking, yada, yada. But you know, you're not charging it. You're not plugging it in. A plug in hybrid actually has exactly what you said. It has a plug in the side and you're going to plug it in to charge it. You can use that electric battery if you want you can do that, but if you don't plug it in, you don't charge it, you still have a gas engine that can do right. So there's no range anxiety, but you can at least plug there it in. There is zero range anxiety because you can still fill it up with gas. A right. And that is a PHEV. Got right. it? There's yes. HEV, PHEV, and then we have just, it's funny, the closer you get to electric, all of a sudden letters drop. Yeah, just, less letters. Just EV, which is EV. just electric vehicle. And electric, it has a plug because it has zero gas engine, zero emissions. Right. You have to plug it in. If you don't plug it in and charge it. Like a Tesla or a Leaf. Yes. Yeah. I love that you picked a Tesla. <laughs> it couldn't be two different cars. Well, this way you have a, you, you have a pricing options. It's you available do. for everyone. You have, and actually there are so many electric vehicles that are on the road these days that you mm. genuinely do have options that run from tiny little, teeny little compact affordable cars like the Leaf up to much more expensive vehicles like the Tesla. And there's things like the Lucid, which is a sedan that's absolutely gorgeous. And there's trucks like the Rivian and Ford even has the F-150 Lightning. Like there is an EV version of just about every vehicle class that you could think. And how affordable they are, that's a whole different question. But yeah, there's an, there's something electrified. See, they all these are electrified. <laughs> yes. Hybrid, plug-in hybrid, electric. And is the is the early hybrid, the one without any plugs, still considered electrified? Yeah, okay. it's still, it's still car, considered an electrified powertrain. So when they say, like when you hear OEMs, uh, automakers say OEMs, I hate to throw out lingo. <laughs> um, they, we call them OEMs, automakers, car companies. Right. They, when they say, you know, we're, all our vehicles will be electrified. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean everything is going to have just electrification. So there's depends, you know, so, but there's, there all is this giant move towards electrification. And in that move, you've got the hybrid, you got the plug-in hybrid and you got the fully electric. I'm a fan of the plug-in hybrid for people who aren't quite sure, because I feel like it's a happy medium. That's what the Mazda we have in the driveway is. Yes. It's the CX 90 is a plug-in hybrid. So it lets you experience, it gets you comfortable with the idea of plugging in your car, mm -hmm. right? Because it's weird. Like you're like, right. I gotta plug in my car, plug in my toaster. I don't plug in my car. So you get used to plugging in your vehicle. You get used to the idea of looking for a charging station. If you want to plug it in when you're on the road, you maybe have one installed at your house because you like, you want to be able to charge at home. So you sort of get the idea of living with an electric vehicle, yes. but you're not so tied to it that, oh goodness, if I don't plug it in, if I can't find someplace to charge, 
now I'm stuck on the side of the road, which realistically is not going to happen to most people anyway, because honestly, the range is more than what most people use in a day. You really don't drive as much as you think. Most of you don't drive as much as you think. So it's when you're road you're tripping, to, that's a problem. When you're road tripping, it's yeah. a colossal pain in the butt. <laughs> it really it is. is not fun. I you do, have stories. I have stories. Yeah. Which that's, is probably another whole episode. It's another but. whole episode. <laughs> my stories about the, the horrors of trying to do a road trip through dark and scary places in an electric vehicle. Hey, wait, did we just drive by a bakery? We never drive by a bakery. No, we, always we don't. Stop. That's the worst bumper ever because we always stop. I know. We and always stop. We sound stop. like that. Yeah. yeah. Occasionally it does. Like, wait, <laughs> does. I must pull a U turn right here in these 25 lanes right. of traffic. Um, so I didn't have to pull a U turn to get to this one, though. Pull a Yui, New England lingo. A Yui. Pull a Yui. Um, this was, <clears throat> excuse me, on the Chevy tracks that I drove earlier this week that I can't, that we really can't talk, talk about, about yet. yet. I can. Just teasing people. Uh-huh. I can talk about where they had us stop for a little like mid-drive driver swap coffee break because they mm. always give us a little coffee So what break. is a driver swap? That feels like lingo to me. So we, when you do these drive programs, when you go out and you drive an all new whatever the heck it is mm-hmm. for whatever company it is and they have a route plan for you to drive, most of the time they send you with a someone else. You have a drive partner. It's another journalist. Okay. So what you'll do is you'll drive and you drive half the route out to say lunch or your break. I drive and half the route my drive partner drives on the way back. You sometimes do the same swap, but somewhere in there, the idea is you're swapping one of you's driving, one of you's riding. And I think it's nice because it, it, it actually like having a drive partner. Some people don't every now and mm-hmm. then they let you not have one now, especially post COVID where for a long time we couldn't, they were like, you will right. ride by yourself. Um, but the neat thing is you kind of each see different things about a vehicle, which is kind of fun. So I might see something that the guy next to me doesn't. The guy next to me sees something that I don't. So it brings stuff to your attention and you're each kind of looking at different things. So it gives you more a better view of what the vehicle is like. Um, and also safety thing. You know, I've got someone else in the car with me. Should something go wrong with them or with me? I've yeah, got right. someone that can be calling and saying like, hey, help. This is what's going on. Or we need, you know, you're never, you're never stranded anywhere. If you get a flat or whatever by yourself, got it. you have someone else. So our driver swap for this one. Okay. Chevy did such a good job picking this. <laughs> it's, now do you guys, do you journals like journalists like get together and a rate where you guys stop? I don't think we rate, but there's some places that we all really love. Like right. a lot of the times they look for someplace new, but there are places that we visit again and again in certain areas and that none of us will complain about visiting. So there's like known places. Like there's if some, they don't take us to place X, like Julian's pie, Julian's pie. If you have me do a drive by Julian and you don't have me stop for pie, there will be words. It's going to bother me. Yes. Yeah, there will be words. We will have <laughs> words, uh, but they had to stop at a place called Go-Go's cinnamon rolls it is an old fort north carolina which is near Asheville because we were our home base was in Asheville. go go cinnamon rolls teeny tiny little shop doesn't look very interesting from the outside sort of unassuming little shop and you go in and the minute you open the door it smells like heaven oh. it just smells like sugar and pastry and it's amazing so and they sell exactly what their sign says Cinnamon rolls. One flavor? Just cinnamon no, rolls? Oh. there must have been. I was really trying to think. It was a giant display case. I would say there were maybe a dozen flavors, and I don't think I'm exaggerating. I think Wow. That, yeah, so there was. I didn't you could have a dozen different kinds of cinnamon chocolate, rolls. Chocolate, chocolate peanut butter, red velvet. There was lemon. Oh, there was apple that's a pie. red velvet cinnamon roll. There was roll. one that was like an orange. It was, but think like orange creamsicle, like the old, yeah. like the cake pops. Mm-hmm. Um, everything smelled amazing. And then they had savory ones. They had one that was a jalapeno popper. So think like a cinnamon what? roll thing with like the jalapeno, but like a cinnamon roll like dough. Like cinnamon spice. It was like a jalapeno. And wow. then they had a sausage and gravy one. Okay. And this is the South. And I'm telling you, there are some things that are made in the region for which they are known. That is where you want to get them. And biscuits and gravy is one. Also putting sausage and gravy on a cinnamon roll. Wait, wait, was it like biscuit gravy? Like sawmill like, gravy on a yeah, bit cinnamon? Yeah, it was kind of like a, yeah. It was like, like actual warm gravy? It was like a, I think so. I feel like it was warm. Whoa, yeah. that's freaking me out. Was it good? I did not have that one. I can only eat one. I mean, this Which is one did not, you get? I got, I was going to go for chocolate peanut butter and this sounds so ridiculous, but I thought the chocolate peanut butter was too much. So I just went with <laughs> chocolate because that's not too much. Well, I'll just go for the gravy and biscuits. No, I, I wanted a man. sweet one. I did anybody get the biscuits one. and gravy? Well, a couple of the folks from Chevy who had been there because okay. they're there for many days. They're like, oh, this is a So rolls. wait, so the guys who've been there more than once got the biscuits and gravy. They tried because so they, they tried very up. many. They oh. tried several of the flavors. And what was their opinion of the best? Everybody had a different best. Oh, okay. Everybody had a different best. Yeah, everybody liked different flavors. So it was really, it was so good. If I had a way of getting home like a half dozen of these, I would have said, give me six. 
you guys behind the counter pick your six favorite and bring yes. them home. But I felt like I couldn't. It was You've the time. pies home. I, feel I know, like, but th- this ugh. was didn't. I felt like I couldn't get this home with what I had to bring home. I couldn't. Oh, I couldn't make man, it work. I missed out. So now that I just have really to go good. back to Asheville. Yeah, Asheville's mark that easy. one in the old uh, app there. So next time we're yes. in town. And because it's the South, they have all sorts of amazing, very Southern food in the area. Like at the biscuits, the gravy, fried chicken. You get pimento cheese. There was oh, pimento, pimento cheese, cheese on the charcuterie at night. So yeah, which is Yum. a thing that you either love or you hate when you try it. I love it. The correct answer is love. The correct answer is love. Oh yeah, pimento it's cheese. It's really good. I've had it on all sorts of stuff. So that nice. was so that was the the break stop with our go go cinnamon rolls that I man, I want to go back to North Carolina just for cinnamon rolls. Thanks for listening to The Road Reflected. To follow more of Nicole Wakeland's adventures, head on over to NicoleWakeland.com. There you'll find links to her social media from TikTok to Twitter, as well as her work across a wide range of media outlets. Until next time, keep it shiny side up.